Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to A Death of a Dark Crusade Season 2. This scene takes place a couple weeks ago, a fortnight ago. A while. Just after the successful yet simultaneously botched heist of the Cappadocian lair, the brutal maiming of a ghoul, the murder of several civilians throughout a library and the city's largest mosque. And the alarming of several members of Cappadocian as to all of this happening on what is effectively their territory, not their domain, in part because it was never their domain and part because there are no domains without a prince to enforce them. The aforementioned maimed ghoul, having been brutally wounded, clawed at, parts of his limbs torn up in immense pain, having literally been ripped off through well, unnatural implements. Presumably that of a canine's fangs. Has managed to make his way to the Merchant of Bones. and has informed him in his near delirious state of the brutal attempted killing of his dormitor and its partial success and the thievery of the most valuable artifact of the clan. The perpetrator A small petite woman with long hair and pale skin Description fitting a fledgling that Salim knows of Mina. News. Oh shit. Oh, it's not broken. Oh, Thank God. I'm going to make a roll. Mina, you lose a permanent willpower point. Ooh. 
Now, if all I have is one willpower, does that mean I just fall unconscious wherever I am? No, so you're losing a permanent willpower, not your temporary willpower. Oh, okay. So that takes away from your maximum, but it doesn't use up the temporary one that you have. Fabulous. I'm still hissing in an alley somewhere, because I can barely move. Fabulous. Well, speaking of where you actually are, when you come out of Frenzy, things are not as they were prior. You don't say. You, you wake up in... Uh, what appears to be an abandoned building lost a plague. The room you're in is dusty and moldy. Uh, cobwebs are gathering in the corners of the room. A small end table off to the side. And a chair which is just stacked, leaning up against... Uh, uh, the uh, lever that opens uh, the doorknob uh, to this abandoned house. Uh, the windows have been boarded up. The door looks heavily damaged. Can't imagine how that happened. The uh, house itself also, uh, the, the floorboards seem to creak. Um, the upper end, uh, the, the sort of second floor of this house seems particularly unstable. You see splinters um, kind of cracks in the ceiling. Am I on the second story? No, you're on the first floor. Oh boy. You have been... Uh, actually, as you kind of come to, um, you feel an immense pain. You feel extremely groggy and tired, um, reminiscent of not only your lack of willpower, but the fact that it has been partially robbed from you. The fact that you literally feel lesser. Um, You smell uh, the ridiculously strong scent of Vitae around you, but you're not sure where from. Um, not initially. You're surrounded in what appears to be a, a, a circle uh, with... Symbols that you do not recognize uh, in a language that you do not understand. All, all lined with chalk. And something of note, actually, is on one of the walls, there is a rectangle, a, a large human-sized rectangle. On one of the walls again, um, just just an outline of a rectangle drawn in chalk, almost like a doorway. The shiny is gone. You have seven blood points. Your have is still crippled. You feel a burning um, sensation um, on your wrists and on your neck. And I imagine she will be vaguely stirring 
probably making a lot of pained noises because she hurts mm -hmm. in her everything. The... And rubbing unconsciously at the wrists at her neck. When you look to them, they appear to be uh, burn marks. They resemble chains. Please tell me vampires have a rule vaguely similar to the werewolf one, where you can only frenzy so many times in a row. <laughs> ah, no, you can frenzy all you want. Um, this does not drive you to frenzy, uh, because these these marks appear to have happened. That that they've already occurred. It just hurts. They have, but they're so blatantly chains. Mm. Not necessarily frenzy, but she is in pain, exhausted, and furious. The most futile fury known to man. There is another brand. Oh, is there? Hmm. On the upper side of your neck, as the uh, chain marks are at the base. There is another mark you can feel on you. Well, you can't really see it from your angle. You need to look in a mirror. Because you can't actually really see the upper side of your neck. Alas. <clears throat> but there's definitely something there. You currently have four levels of aggravated damage on you. The rest is lethal. Oh, goody. Slim, you have been told the general direction of where this individual that may or may not be Mima went. Um, not an exact location. Um, but as you kind of hurry along, It's not too difficult to track her. As in, she left quite the trail. As you make wow. your way. Wow, that was audible through your microphone. <laughs> yeah, that was really ominous as fuck. <laughs> No, it was cool. Don't don't mute. <laughs> I think somebody knocked on his door. Oh, damn it. <laughs> I will state for the record during the pause that she's going to sit and mull and try to heal off at least one of those people. <laughs> Probably two of them. She can't afford to spend more than that, but everything hurts. Oh. So, if she is um, as the thunder strikes, Jesus Christ, Mina, or not Mina, has left quite a trail. A part in blood. There, there's kind of a thin blood trail, like splatters, not an actual literal trickle of blood directly leading to location, but there is. There is a there are splatters of blood all over the place, and uh, she has also left her fair share of corpses, um, and left a fair share of panic amongst the uh, district's populace. Um, hmm. And 
as you make your way down the street, off the mount, there is blood on the gates up the hill to the mount. Then on the square there is a body strewn up against the wall, just laying there, uh, its throat cleanly torn out. Um, the blood then goes down an alleyway. Uh, there are also claw marks in the walls and uh, kind of peeled off flesh if you're using your heightened senses. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> the blood spider then continues partway down the street into another alley. Up and over a building into the adjacent alley. There is another body here. Uh, this one has its chest ripped out. Um, its heart has been um, partially consumed. It should be noted, the City Watch are all over the place. Uh, they too appear to be looking for this person. Um, you're not able to directly follow the trail in these alleyways because the city have immediately cordoned and cordoned them, uh, are cordoning them off. Uh, mm -hmm. You're able to get past the first two. The third corpse is uh, is uh, just in the middle of the street. Um, you're not even sure if it's been fed upon because the blood is everywhere. Um, it's not been exsanguinated. And none of these bodies have been fully exsanguinated. Um, but this, this, this body appears to not have been had that much blood taken from it, if at all. Um, it's just the body of an old woman in the middle of the street. City guards are already picking her up and taking her, uh, taking away the body uh, on, on a corpse cart as, as you get there. Mm -hmm. um, they're already trying to clean up the blood, but it appears to have like covered like a, a massive portion of like the, the, the width of the road itself appears to have covered some of the walls. Um, one of uh, one of the woman's limbs having been torn off, and uh, her face um, being uh, partially cleaved apart. And uh, as you uh, see the city watch uh, taking this woman away. Uh, you run into uh, you. Uh, you see the woman who seems to be monitoring the situation, or organizing it in some sense. And tell me if you're using any powers while this is happening. By the way, um, he would definitely be using aspects, uh, heightened senses at least. Okay. Yeah. Um, not all of the blood is human blood. Some of it is vampire vitae. In fact, a significant amount of it, particularly the blood trail, is vampire vitae. Just trickles, faint trickles. You can actually, you can actually track it via scent. It's still fresh. Like you could probably trace it back to the source, if you make the roll and succeed at it. Yeah, you would like to try. This would be a diff six roll because normally you wouldn't be able to make this roll without. Um, actually, I'm gonna, no, I'm gonna say this is gonna be probably difficulty. Uh, heightened senses. Your all specs is really high, though. Yeah. So I'm gonna, yeah, I'm gonna say, uh, yeah, actually, with counting back, it'd probably only be diff five for you because you you have extremely strong all specs. Yep. Um, what's the actual roll though? Um, it is a perception survival. Uh, so you can make a perception of survival diff five, or you can make a perception alertness diff seven. Um, because um, survival is normally used for tracking. He's just going to use uh, flat perception because, uh, yeah, <laughs> he doesn't yeah, actually. Have yeah, adds a plus one diff to the roll, which is still diff six. So yeah, he may as well just use survival, unless you want the extra dice from the uh, from the alertness. Yeah. So one. 
Okay, uh, you only need one success for this. You're able to trace. You're, you're able to trace the the vitae. Um, you're not really used to this sort of hardcore, um, kind of on the fly, um, like li literally like a dog sniffing someone down. Mm -hmm. um, you, it's it's not so, you're really unaccustomed to this, despite the strength of your own specs. Um, so so it's a bit of an unfamiliar um, sensation to you, but you're able to get the gist of what's happening. Mm -hmm. And and like where what the what what you're sensing where where what direction you should be going in like where where the scent is taking you. And um... you get at this point where the trail begins to thin out, largely because of the massive volume of blood spilt from this corpse, kind of muddles the senses a little bit. But um, um, so the the the, the like the actual sight of a blood trail is actually somewhat vague at this point, but um. Um, yes, uh, you, you can definitely smell it and uh, track it via scent. Um, Lady Astor just walks up to you. This says, I already have my men cleaning up the mess. I can only assume you're after the same person that I am. I believe I am. Thank you for taking the initiative and rectifying this catastrophe. I assume that you are in control of these men here because we need to go this way. Many kind of points in the direction of the of the scent with his cane. Yes, I just got fortunate. One of my oh, uh, servants found a body or someone violating this woman on the street. Hmm. And he gives a description to a, a girl with hmm. pale skin and long hair. I'm currently tracking her down. It's only been a few minutes. She couldn't have gotten far. Matches the description that my servant gave. If it's who I believe it is, then... We ought to find her soon. If you can have the guards move so we may continue. I don't know how long the scent will last. That must be off then. Got to take care of the rest. She simply motions to to one of the guards in a sort of um sort of off to the cart and the and the, to the to the cart and the guard, and they will just be on their way. Um, but yes, I presume you continue. Uh, tracking this individual. Mm-hmm. Um, what's, what's left are a few handprints along the walls that get fainter um, in a given alleyway. Uh, the sense of Vita is still strong here, but once you leave the alley or alleyway, it begins to thin out again. Um, Vita gets very faint at this point. Uh, along the main road, and it's kind of, uh, it's kind of, uh, it's uh, it's heavily, uh, they're heavily, uh, where well, you can see the Vitae, it's obviously uh, much, much more distant, like the points where the Vitae is on, on different objects, uh, it's along, along a railing, um, well, sorry, along, along a post, uh, along a wall, 
it's much fainter and they're more further apart from each other. Um, so the scent itself is fainter, but um, you're still able to track uh, uh, this individual. And as you go along down the main road, you take a detour into uh, well, actually, no, you take a detour into an alley. And you head up the uh, up some outside stairs up to another roof. It's at this point that you can't really see any Vitae anymore. Uh, you can maybe with a heightened senses, you can see some very, very faint markings, but that's it at this point. Maybe a few fallen drips, nothing else. Um, but you can still smell it fairly clearly. Looks like this person was jumping um, from building to building. Okay. Um. You actually, um, you see, um, you see a hole in one of the buildings because you're getting into one of the areas that was affected by plague at this point just not that's one of the neighborhoods there's already there've been but you've been you've been through like certain buildings in different neighborhoods have been affected by plague this is one of the more heavily impacted neighborhoods where basically most of the buildings have been abandoned um quite close to riverside very close to riverside hmm. um it's just uh, it's just a few minutes out from riverside you've more or less been heading straight south this entire time Mm-hmm. You notice one of the um you notice one of the buildings, uh kind of as you look outward with your height senses, um has a, a roof uh has a, a rather large human sized hole in its roof where the um The, uh, the, I think it would be second. Um, yeah, it would be this thing, I think. Um, yeah, the stone itself has a um, been caved in. The entire building looks very run down. Like the roof itself looks very unstable. Uh, the windows have been boarded up, or at least what windows you can see have been boarded up. And the entire thing just looks like it's in a state of decay. It's not. It is. It's not. It's falling apart very slowly. Mm -hmm. Looks like someone hit kind of a weak point in the roof and hit of enough force to fall down inside of it, or maybe they just broke it open. You're not sure. It's certainly been broken apart. Whether that was by accident or not is, is you're not entirely certain. <clears throat> Something you do notice is that it's actually a fair amount of rubble on the roof itself, as if it could have been actually um, struck from below. You're not actually sure if this person struck it from above or below. Um, but the uh, trace of Vitae leads in there. Unfortunately, due to your odd gate, it would be very hard for you to jump between these buildings. Yeah. <laughs> um, um, uh, and Lady Astor doesn't seem too confident either. Yeah. Um, Just beneath her. Uh, at least from my blue booking post, uh, Selim would have had his two minions and his uh, ghoul follow him. Um, uh, if if they're allowed to be here, you know. Um, if not, uh, he would uh, look to Lady Astor and um, just say, with my issues with walking, I will not be able to jump from house to house, but I believe the trail leads to the house with the peculiar hole in the roof just over there. We will need to 
Or at least I believe we will need to check that out first. We are just hitting Riverside, where the plague is hit pretty hard here. It'll make a good hiding spot. Or at least a place to lay low until one recovers. I see. With any luck, how long a route would take very long. But I'll put someone on her. And she um, she says something in Latin. Um, she kind of looks to your side and just says, Inveniet iam. Um, you understand Latin? Yep. So you know that means find her. And she points to that building. Fortunately, on a roof, so no one sees the flagrant skullduggery. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this entire event has had people running for their lives. It is kind of chaos on the streets, but people just kind of running and all that jazz. Mm hmm. Not a riot, but people just kind of scattered off the streets, and there are people kind of clinging to the entrances of shops and stuff. It's a very eerie atmosphere right now. Uh, things are a bit more normal here. As you begin to enter the formerly plague-ridden neighborhood, um, just because there are less people here, and uh, less murders happened, ironically. And you, uh, you will begin to slowly approach the building, Lady Astor kind of walking your pace. She seems to be taking her time alongside you. Hmm. She seems fairly confident now for some reason. She seems um more at ease. Oh. Um I'm gonna leave everyone with their thoughts for a minute after AFK for one minute. Yeah, that's that's fine. AFK. Hey, hey, buddy. Hey, hey, hey. You ready to kick the baby? <laughs> <laughs> you make it sound so horrible. <laughs> oh, no. I'm just going to forever make jokes about her being infantile, because let's be fair, someone should have watched the baby. <laughs> yeah, the baby. That, the baby non that, that, that non-existent mentor. Or <laughs> <laughs> Gregory, he fucked. <laughs> yeah. Is she, wait, is she a fledgling still? She's a fledgling. Oh my gosh. <laughs> wow, wow, holy shit.
That yep, baby yep, did some, yep. That baby did some damage though. Holy fuck. She's a very destructive baby. <laughs> little little fucking warhead. Her fucking tantrums are awe inspiring. I'll have you know. <laughs> <laughs> With that face? Like, I can imagine. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Just look at like, I can't do it. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, I'll just rip your heart out. It'll be fine. <laughs> you can do it, but I'm going to make you feel bad. <laughs> I, I, you know, that's, that's totally fair. <laughs> that is totally fair. I'll, I'll make the effort. If I don't survive, at least I shattered your soul a little bit. I'm going to have to fucking light some candles and stuff later. And <laughs> take some time out to <laughs> galvanize myself for anything else the rest of the evening. <laughs> oh, damn it. <clears throat> the sad part. I don't know what any of these effects on her do. <laughs> yeah. I was just like, man. Like, because I was thinking, it's like, try blood bonding her, then, like, she already went through that, like, already. <laughs> like, that's that sucks. Like, like she can be at literally one health, and she will still fight you tooth and nail with her, yeah. like, one or two dice the entire way. Definitely. It will be futile, but she will try really hard. No doubt. I mean, yeah, I mean, that's 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 legit. <laughs> God damn it, I need to pull up the book so I can see my road tenants. Where is my road? What road is she on? Sin? <laughs> <laughs> this is why she's the most violent, baby. Aww. <laughs> and potentially a very, very dusty one. She oh. is, in fact, a dusty baby. A very dirty. Needs she's a very dirty right now. She desperately needs bath. <laughs> Wash it down, old train. Um. <laughs> no, well, well, I guess at least if it comes down to that. Okay, I had to. I had to Sorry. look up my tenants for shit. Yes. Um, as you begin to uh, approach the building, uh, Mina, can you make me a perception awareness roll? I can try really hard. Um, out of curiosity, since well, well this is happening if I have had the time. She is, like, poked at the symbols, tried to step out of the circle to see if it would bite her if she tried. Kind of poked and prodded and pawed at the chalk door. Like, is any of the stuff reacting to her at all? <clears throat> well, I'm looking up my shit. No. It's not. Um... So that pool is that. Zero one one two. So okay. because I will remember my wound penalties, God help me. Oh yeah, you're a minus five, unless you want to heal it. I, I am healing two of it. Because I can only spare two blood and I can only heal two of the damage anyways. Okay. Um But it's a good roll. BT dubs are my voices going bananas. No, you can't. You can't opt to try and tap into the madness network. I haven't really got a proper I'm, system. I'm not sure that would really help anything. So it would tell you everything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but whether or not that's helpful in this situation is uh, up for debate. But um, hey, good awareness roll for two dice. <laughs> 
Whatever the circles you store appears to have lost its power. Um, the same goes for the chalk. Well, no, the chalk door on the wall seems a bit off to you. You can't tell why. Um, however, you do feel a presence around you. And the room is cold, unnaturally so. Oh, son of a bitch. <laughs> the temperature oh, well. briefly lifts for a moment. For a good half, uh, half minute. As uh, Lady Astor is here walking towards the building, is caught off guard for some reason. Yeah, for what it's worth, she will be huddled back to the wall against this little door spot. Wait, you said Lady Astor was caught off guard? Yeah, she seems alarmed by someone, and she just says, for that. Uh, what, she, what does she say? Uh, she says, basically, just go, go, in, in Latin. Oh, like okay. in, in a hurried fashion. I sell them goes as fast as a cripple can. <laughs> uh, I don't know, she says it to, she, she's not saying it to you, she's literally looking, oh. like, away from you. Oh, gotcha. She kind of mutters it away from you. Hmm. <clears throat> Um, and yeah. <laughs> Is there a problem? Blood magic. Hmm. Not her, some someone else. We should we should hurry. Um, Mina, at this point, uh, as you kind of begin to get a proper bearing on your surroundings, uh, you, 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 the disorientation starts to fade. Um, the the pain becomes uh, uh, less in uh, less inhibiting in the sense that before you're extremely disoriented and dazed due to just waking up. Mm-hmm. Um, and you're only you're only really just getting a bearing on what happened to you, your surroundings, where you are, what the fuck has happened, where your prize is. She's probably muttering time and again, um, very quietly to herself. Just what did you do to me? Over and over and over, as she pokes at the chalk and goes and touches the the quote door and presses on it and fusses with it even takes a, a bloodied portion of her body and like swipes it on it trying to see if she can make it work because you know she's woken up in some pretty bad spots and this seems like one of those oh, and anything boy. might be better than where she woke up mm. so what's she doing Probably once she can't get the thing to activate, huddles against it for the moment, like leaning on that spot on the wall and begins to take in the room properly to see if there's a way that she can get out by going up. As much as it looks very unsteady, she's pretty lightweight. And people don't tend to look up. <clears throat> okay. Yeah, you, you spend a little bit trying to get through this chalk doorway, uh, but it doesn't seem to you know, it's you kind of barge against it, and it's you're just hitting a wall. Um, there is a stairway up. Um, the temperature uh, 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 um, falls again. She gives a sharp, kind of distru distrustful glance around as the temperature fluxes back down. Um, and finally, we'll probably start creeping. For that staircase and she's not going to like try to walk up it she's literally going to crawl up it because this place looks really unsteady and she would rather take her time and not take a fall okay just you kind of crawl up the stairs um you can hear muffled voices outside as lady Oz still says i know it's a task but could you help me get this door open and she kind of pulls on the liver and Realizes something is jamming the lever. You mean I know it's the chair. And uh, Selim just looks at the door and looks at her and, and just gives a single nod. 
And she activates first and second level aspects and continues trying to crawl onto the second floor while they get in the door. Okay. Um, you can hear the sounds clearly, or do you like to run perception empathy with your uh, very high penalty? What's your wound level right now? Wait, wait, what? What's your wound? What's your wounded? Uh, what's your health level right now? Fix wounded. Right? Um, she's at four ag. Ah, just four ag. Just you feel till okay, yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah, uh, can you run perception and empathy for your second level of all specs? Perception empathy? Yeah, you need to sure. roll perception and empathy to activate read the soul. Oh, oh, pardon, not, no, obfuscate, not all specs, might be. Obfuscate, yeah, okay, that's fine. But yeah, I will let you guys go on with forcing the door while she tries to kind of just creep painfully out. Yep. Still spend a blood point because I mean, she the plague's gone and people are well more, more well fed now, but that doesn't mean she's everything. So she's just gonna make a standard strength roll check, which is complete garbage for her. <laughs> it's not much better for me either. So, I mean, <laughs> um. Some of more it's heavily damaged, so it won't take a lot of successes to get this door open. It's literally just knocking the chair off the door, and then we can open it. Okay. Um, she gets a success. Some will so spend. She the, the chair, but you need to contribute. <laughs> yeah, he's gonna spend the bullet point to uh, buff his strength, so it brings it to four. Mm -hmm. And then in his brawls, you know, three. So. Um, I'm assuming two successes if a diff is six. Yeah, um, yeah, that's yeah, because the door is damaged and it's really only a chair holding it place. It's not really hard, uh, for you to kind of you don't really bust the door down more than you do is you just knock the chair off where it's jammed in the in the with the with the doorknob and uh, then the asteroid just then kind of pulls down the lever and just kind of. Ends up uh, uh, running into the, into the room a little bit, but kind of unintentionally, you know, she's kind of pushing against the door and the momentum kind of carries her through. She opens the door. She quickly kind of recomposes herself. She's wearing quite, quite a, a, a long dress, so she's really not built to be running around right now. Mm -hmm. um, you know, she, she, she looks like she, she'd be far more suited to having a walk in like the, the palace gardens than than raiding a, an abandoned building. And she just kind of <laughs> dusts herself off, looks upon uh, upon the... Um... Magic circle? Yeah, the, the magic circle and the chalk doorway. <clears throat> Someone will casually Ooh. walk in. C can you roll me your intelligence occult? Sure. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so the magic circle strikes you as something uh, that's definitely not necromancy. Um, that's something else. Mm. You're not entirely sure what kind of magic it is, just because you don't really have a great deal of knowledge on the Tremere and Asimai and Tismisi and Sedai forms of law magic. Uh the language they appear to be inscribed within Hava do 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 suggest uh, an Arabian origin. Mm -hmm. um, the chalk is is an unusual application, um, but you see the chalk doorway and you kind of connect the two dots, and that it was just the same instrument used. You think likely Asimai sorcery from the limited knowledge you have, but. Or, 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 or what you understand to be what the Asimites prefer to use as blood magic. Um, mm -hmm. What's your canine law? Uh, two. Okay, yeah, you don't really know anything else. Um, yeah, you, you know it as Asimite sorcery. Probably. Maybe. The chalk door is what really draws your attention, though. Mm -hmm. um, that, is, that, is, that, is not, that is not any other form of magic other than necromancy. Um, that is 
highly reminiscent of the stereotypical use of advanced manifestations of the ash path. Um, the creation of a portal into the Shadowlands itself. It appears inert right now. Hmm. <clears throat> Are you familiar with the circle, Aster? Yes, not... but, but never mind that. Where's our target? <laughs> Any kind of, I guess, does he smell anything or if he looks around, does he sense anything? <laughs> you Hear have all specs up, don't you? Yep. Let me check the rules for this. Because you are looking for her with all specs. Mm -hmm. So this is going to be uh, a you... contest. The question is, does having a floor between them help at all? Or is it one of those things where line of sight doesn't really matter? Um, it depends on how he's trying to sense you. True. Okay. So he'll still be able to track you via scent if he's able to break your obfuscate. Absolutely. Um... And you are in very close proximity to each other, even if it's just a floor. Like, that's not oh, actually yeah. a big difference. No, it's not. So, um, he will be able to use all specs here. Um, so if the all specs uses... So if the obfuscate user has high levels and obfuscate the all specs user has levels in all specs, they remain hidden. If the all specs user's levels in all specs exceed the obfuscate user's levels in obfuscate, or they even be matched, the all specs user rolls perception plus awareness, difficulty 8, the difficulty is lowered by 1 for every dot of all specs she has in excess of her opponent's obfuscate. Uh, you may not use warpath for this role. Um, uh, what's your all specs level again? 5. Okay. So you're literally an elder level of all specs. Um, so you may roll perception awareness, difficulty 6. Uh, you, um, hmm. I'm not sure if it'll also just break the obfuscate for you personally, or um, whether you can, or whether you will tear it down for everyone in the vicinity. Um, I'm gonna say you'll, uh, before I come up with a rule, a proper ruling on this, I'll just say you'll need a success threshold of three if you want to. Like destroy her or destroy her obfuscate for everyone around her. So basically, to get <laughs> he got it. Her. Yeah. I, okay. I... Yeah. Um. So as you as you reach out of your senses now, you, you uh, you've been kind of tracking this scent cleanly, <clears throat> and then you enter the building. And as you enter the building, you notice something strange. You notice that you're you, you can no longer you can no longer smell anything. You can no longer sense. Um, the person you're looking for. Despite the fact that the scent is very strong here, like, you're close to the source, you know this. And you literally feel like as if your scent, uh, as if, as if a sense has been cut off. Um, like, like, you just don't sense anything, like, you know, you're you know, you have this image in your mind, you are, you're, you're tracking this person, you, you know where to go, and then suddenly it's like, like they're gone. But you reach out with, with your, uh, uh, damn it, Eldritch level of horsebacks, uh, with, with, with this, How to say, great sense of what's this great sense of insight. It's almost like a sixth sense. That's how all specs kind of feels a lot of the time, particularly when you have visions. You reach out and you focus and you try and tear down the barriers that's that's preventing you from tracking, from 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 acquiring this set. You try to Almost, almost of your hand, just grasp out of, out with it, and pull it in. And as you pull in, you almost feel like you almost feel your fingers kind of almost touch something. And as you pull it in, you, it's almost like you're uh, pulling down a curtain. And uh, 
that smell of Vitae comes back to you. And also a faint smell of smoke. All right. Yeah, burned flesh. Yeah, burned, yeah, like burned skin. Um, it's very, very close. It's on the first floor. Mina, you reach the first floor. Um, yeah. Lady Astor's head also snaps up to the stairway as you do this. How uh, how delicate is the situation on this ceiling slash floor? Because I imagine um, she is just very slowly picking her way across, hoping well, that you're if on someone the first follows, floor, they'll kill and it. And in the corridor, basically there's like two rooms on your left, and it's a small corridor, there's two rooms on your left. Um, uh, a, a window uh, down the corridor on your right, and a hole in the ceiling um, <laughs> just right up in front of you. Where was uh, that seriously weak part of the ceiling slash floor um kind of it's kind of sparse like it's interspersed the certain parts of this corridor are definitely a little bit unstable but not all of it yep she's just going to especially if she feels her obfuscate pop is going to clench her jaw, stop muttering to herself, because that is what she does when she is obfuscated, is just hold pleasant conversations, albeit this one isn't especially pleasant, and continues to just very gingerly pick her way along, aiming for the room with the window, hoping that whoever is chasing her will just go through the floor. Okay. So, um, sorry, where are you going? Uh, towards the window. Okay. Whichever room had the window. Because I need a way to get back onto the roof. Uh, you still feel quite cold, um, for the meantime. But, uh, yes, Lady Astor will, uh, kind of head up the stairway, um, as you kind of begin climbing up the window. Um, the window itself um, leads down into the road. It should be noted, you're still quite bloody. <laughs> oh, well, I will check out before I climb out for what it's worth, because I don't need to be spotted in the process. Um, it's not likely there are many people out on the street, but there, there probably is like one, maybe two people in the corner of your eye. Was there any chance there was a window on the back wall? Um, Were there multiple the window wall, options? Uh, no, it just hits a dead end. Um, basically, there's a window uh, on the right side of this corridor. Um, uh, there's what? Uh, there's there's two rooms. There's well, two doors. One like kind of just at the beginning of the uh, of the corridor, and uh, then at the um. Then at the end of the corridor. If they're um, both on the same wall, though, and facing the same street, then there's no yeah. point in going for the further one. But, uh... Yeah. Right, it, does, another... it does the window, when you go out the window, it does connect to a main road. Like a larger road, it's not an alley. And there are Damn a couple it. people just out uh, the corner of your eye. Just kind of like... Just kind of loitering, not really doing anything. Eh. A little bit shady. Um, you said yeah. there was a there was a more distant window. Um, no, it's just this window. Okay. There might be a window in the rooms, but you'd have to open the door to see. They're not open right now. There is, of course, the hole in the ceiling. Which you could climb out. Well, of. I was going to say, can I reach the hole in the ceiling? Um, yeah, I'll take you climbing out. Okay. You're pretty heavily wounded. She is, but she's going to have to climb either way. But falling back inside is better than falling outside. Okay. So yeah, I guess I guess she will yeah, instead be picking her way towards that hole and trying very gingerly to climb out and uh, just clenching her jaw to keep any... Uh... You can hear footsteps like rapidly going up the stairs, by the way, and these stairs aren't particularly long. Yep. I mean... Her options are try to hurry it up and be more likely to fall or have something collapse under her or take her time and be more likely to get out. 
hoping that the floor gives for her pursuit. Yeah, you can only walk right now, I believe. So I can't climb? You can climb, it's just very slow. It's that's just, fine. It's, it's, it's a walking climb, not a running climb. <laughs> yeah, no, that's fine. She needs to go slow anyways, so mm. it works out. But yeah, she just grits her teeth and tries really, really hard not to think about the people closing in on her as she tries oh, to God, get back yeah. out One of your arms hole. is completely, like, broken to shit. It's so painful. Um... He's a very stubborn creature. Yeah, he will. And pain is better than death. Um, as you kind of climb up, uh, I'm sure they spot her before she gets out. Yeah, Astor's going to spot you. Not necessarily, um, Salim. Where? What is? What is the Merchant of Bones doing? Is he just following Lady Astor? Because yeah, you would have followed her up. Okay. Yeah, you can't r run as fast. Um, no. But uh, that's actually still faster than a character at Wounded. Um, <laughs> basically, your movement speed is if you were injured mm -hmm. at all times. So, because um, that's that's what your half your running speed is. So, um, interesting. Uh, you're still, yeah, you're still. Uh, you probably uh, Lady Astor will basically see um, this uh, the 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 kind of backside of uh, Mina. She. Uh, Climbs up onto uh, onto the uh, the roof. And uh, she's going to do a thing. Can she do it, actually? Yes, she can. <laughs> I'm already sad. You're, you're, you are, you are on the roof now. So you're not going to magically fall back down. Well, that's a bonus. But she's going to do anything. She's go she's going to do a thing. Um, do please. She's going to spend a point of willpower because that's ne necessary. She will roll seven dice. Oh, okay. <laughs> I just get good luck when I'm when I'm when I'm, a, when I'm an ST. That's that's when I get on my good rolls. Um, you are. You may take physical actions with a dice penalty equal to the necromancer's successes. So, in As other a... words, she gets up there and just can't move anymore. Um. Basically, you may crawl. Um. So what happens? Uh. How long is this last? It only lasts a turn. <clears throat> what is the actual effect? Like, as far it's as called, how it feels? It's called, it's, she's using a power called a Rigor Mortis. She cries out to you as, um, uh, to, to uh, the much and Bones. And she just says, there, she's trying to make her way through the roof. And um, yeah, uh, basically goes out of her hand and uh, freezes you in place temporarily. Um, basically, uh, your body just stiffens. Yeah, I this powder necromancer can make any target as stiff and still as a corpse. A target afflicted with rigor mortis can only move by sheer forces will, force of will as his own muscles contract uncontrollably, freezing him into place. And that is what you feel. Uh, your muscles and your bones contract, even your broken ones. Yep. Which you thought were completely be. useless. No, they begin embedding themselves into your muscles. But fabulous. There will be um, undoubtedly a yelp of pain before all of the air is like pushed out of her lungs. Yeah, you kind of feel a kind of a pained wheeze from the uh, girl on the roof. As a maybe yeah. Astor, um, we'll spend uh, another point in strength and try to jump up. I hope the floor collapses because you're a butt. Yeah, this is why she has to make the athletics roll because she <laughs> could fail miserably. It is strength athletics though, um, because uh, she jumping. 
Yeah, she's she's jumping. She's making a straight jump, so. Yep, yep. Do it. Do it to it. Oh, she botches. What? <laughs> <laughs> really? Yeah. Really? Jeez. Okay. So she she looks like she's about to jump up, then the floor collapses on her. What a what a uh, what a twisted world we live in. Um <laughs> If she falls back down um, to the first, to the to the first floor, to the ground floor, uh, she doesn't take any damage because she has fortitude and really doesn't have to care. Um, but yeah, uh, she, she lands. It says L, my pride. Yeah, <laughs> she she's partially buried under under the kind of uh, under the rubble, um, and she has to pick herself back up. Um, Selim, what do you do? You can jump up as well. It will be difficulty eight for you. Um, I'm just looking at my athletics dice, and uh... <laughs> you can just spend the strength. You can spend a willpower if you want. This isn't a role where you can't spend a willpower. Um, sure, he'll spend the willpower to jump up. Okay. Uh, do make the roll anyway, because it'll kind of dictate how well. And he'll spend what, a blood point to uh, buff his strength, because yeah. Yeah. Because if you only get a single success, you're able to jump up, but you're still. I mean, Mina's barely able been able to make any distance, but you kind of land awkwardly, and you're at risk of falling down or the ceiling caving in on all of you. Uh, I guess two. Two. Um, with the success, three successes. That's a full success. You're fine. Um, yeah, considering the rigor mortis, he, I mean, if he comes up through the hole, he's probably going to land practically on top of her. Yeah, Mina literally can't move. Uh, Mina's frozen in place. If and you basically case. see a shriveled, curled up Mina as you jump up and land. Um, you kind of shake your uh, bad leg a little bit. Yeah, uh, he dust himself off a second. Looks down at Mina. Should have known. I did know. And, um, yeah, he will basically, uh, grab, I guess, Mina's clothing and kind of push her back down into the hole. Um, question for you in chat, Mina. The latter. Excellent. Absolutely the latter. In which case, um, with your cane, you sh literally shovel her back down the uh, hole in the ceiling, um, through the hole all the way uh, through the hole now in the second floor all the way down to the first floor um mina can you certainly two bashing <laughs> i can you, sure try you buddy you don't have the chance to land properly and and you're landing on like rubble and oh my god i did oh yeah Which is no, good because she's mangled already <laughs> yeah. practically well, you just fold that down and you're like, ah. She still definitely lands hard. She doesn't land pretty. And you and, and there's Lily... another squeak and a pitiful whimpering noise when she hits the ground. You and the Lady Astor are both picking each other back up at the same time. <laughs> I'm not sure she's even got it in her to get all the way back up. And like, Astor's dress is torn and she is royally pissed off at this. <laughs> All things considered at this point, Mina looks at the woman pulling herself out of the rubble, glances up to the masked figure on the roof, and just cur curls herself into a tinier ball. Sad. Albeit if it is a point of interest, that does mean that like fetal position, like hands up and over her head means her wrists are visible. 
Because she doesn't know what's on them, but for all I know, you might. And what, what Mia sees is that um, Astor gets up. She looks furious at you, but she walks away from you towards the chair. But when you're in your uh, kind of fetal position. Nope, she that's when she starts finally squirming. She's not stupid. And it's not like she's going to make a big show of running, but she will start like squirming and wriggling and trying to push herself back, scoot until she's got her back to the wall. Something something manifests in front of you. Like a, a very kind of pale, translucent figure, which is a vaguely humanoid form. And it tries to, uh, it's going to try and pin you. I need to briefly look up uh, the same stats. You might make a strength roll roll. Oh boy. My best roll that I can't make with a negative two fucking wound penalty. Oh. Oh yeah, I forgot you don't actually have dots and brawl. That always yeah. surprises me every time I hear She's it. She's not a brawler, she's a knife fighter. She's okay. too small for brawling. Um, oh. Where is it? Here nope, she just squirms and wriggles and tries to just squirm back into a corner. That's all she's got. Well, I think that's three dice. I mean, all it needs is one success. It gets free. Can it yeah. Um, it's so, yeah, literally it kind of, zero like, effort. You up. It like grabs. It uh, kind of grabs your head. Like kind of whacks you against the floor. Um, grabs one of your arms and twists it behind your back. Um, it can't keep doing this though because it's very hard for it to do this. It can only do this for a couple turns. Yeah. No. There's. She doesn't have any dice to fight back with. She is too injured to even do more than really kind of squirm, but a number of like horrifically pained, piteous noises come out of her. Mm. Lady Astor just walks over to the chair, snaps off a chair leg. Like... And that'll be her turn. Well, and... We're in pseudo combat. I have a question for you. Mm. Panic? Um, you're it's a terrible exhausted idea. Right now. Okay, I was going to say, I don't necessarily want to, but realistically, she is going to go into a, like, a panic state when someone's coming at her with a stake and she's this fucked up. I don't necessarily want to fear Frenzy, but let it be known. It gets more pitiful. <laughs> I love it. Yeah, well, her instantly. eyes just get enormous and yeah, just panicked thrashing and whimpering pretty much. Roll instinct. Um, Someone's going to make his way down. I don't know if you can easily just come at. Oh, well, I, don't, I doubt that would be a good idea just to come straight down. So he'll carefully make his way back down the hole and back down the hall. I can't remember which way it goes in Vampire, but I assume I'm fine. Uh, yeah, if you succeed, you're fine. Uh, it's unlike Rage, where getting successes is yeah. bad. Uh, no, in, she in doesn't. Vampire, getting successes is good. She doesn't fly off the handle, she just freaks the fuck out. Yeah. And acts like, you know, uh, essentially it's like small child. She she can kick and whine, but it's not going to do her any good. The beast lashes out, and as a sinner, you're quite used to indulging your beast. But, but this time it's just out of energy. Um, the, the beast did good already. It's, it's, it's like it's trying, but it's almost like your own panic is actually getting in the way this time. Yep. I'll say, like, if nothing else, the fangs pop and she hisses 
among other things, but... She will just walk over to you. And she will try and stake you with her makeshift weapon. I'm gonna laugh my ass off when you kill me with your stake. Yeah, she can hold back the damage. <laughs> um, she's not really used to fighting, but she does actually have some dots in melee. Bless her heart. She'll spend a bit of blood for this. Uh, it's not particularly difficult for her to hit you. I'm just going to double check because you're currently what's considered immobilized. Oh yeah, she fucked. I'm just I'm just double checking what that actually means. I think I know it lowers the diff. I'm not sure if it actually provides ultimate I mean, successes. At or... the very least, I know prone is a negative two diff, but she is a lot worse than prone. Yeah. Um, one sec, as I find it. Here we go. Uh, she gets two additional dice and uh, a minus two death. Because she's uh, attacking you from uh, from the rear. Probably she's just able to grab you and strike it through the target's area. Like the target's penalty is not going to apply when you're immobilized. So she'll be striking a normal death. So she will actually get a lot of dice to this. Only three successes. She gets a lot of force. Yeah, she does two. Oh no 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 no! She does free free lethal to you. Can you soak that Mina, please? Uh, Salim, you witnessed this, so you can do whatever you want while this is happening. Hmm. Yeah, Salim will basically make his way down. Um, though that. He's not too particularly perturbed by what Aster is actually doing, but he is kind of concerned that the... Would he know that this door could be reactivated at any time? If the one came back to use it, yes. It's possible but, they could reactivate it on the other side of Shadowlands, and you'd have no way of knowing. Is... Uh, can he? Uh, can he? Is there any way he can disrupt that by maybe breaking the chalk circle or, uh, square? Um, let me just check. You could disrupt entry from from the physical end, but you would not be able to disrupt it from the uh, other side lands and from the end of the Shadowlands because uh, the door will reside there as well. Okay, so even if I did it on this side, they could still come from that side of uh, potentially because if they made the door on the Shadowlands to come back through, then they could walk back through. Oh shit! Mm. So yeah, it's. It's it's why you can't just like raise the door and say, "Ha ha, this necromancer is not trapped in the underworld forever." Um, yeah, that's fair. It's uh, it's um, yeah, because because the door can be triggered on both ends. It it um, all you're doing is disrupting entry from the physical end. Uh, they could gotcha. still and they could still exit through this door if they entered through the shadowlands. 
mm -hmm. through the Shadowlands reflection. But you don't really, uh, do you, you don't have Wraith Law, do you? No. Yes, yeah, so you don't have a great deal of understanding about the Shadowlands. Um, but your understanding of necromancy uh, uh, allows you to understand that um, disrupting this door as it is would not disrupt someone coming back through it if they were to go through the Shadowlands. You, d you disrupt it if they were to try and go through the physical end, like to go, yeah. to go through it from here, but it wouldn't stop them from just coming back through from, uh, from, the, uh, from this door's reflection. Gotcha. Um, like or the door that exists in the Shadowlands, you don't really understand like what the door, like this this door's like existence is in the Shadowlands. You don't know like how it works at all. Um, but you understand that for whatever reason, the door ends. Like it's it kind of it goes both ways. Gotcha. Um, so yeah. Mm, as uh, Aster, I guess basically tries to uh, stake Mina you know, and uh, sell them will pipe up uh, just kind of uh, she's almost staked she takes too lethal the stake is sticking in her chest yeah mm -hmm. and he'll just walk down the stairs where is it Mina where is the jar with the light Um, oh, oh, I should I should say this. Uh, something you notice on uh, you notice you notice Mina's brands, but uh, one second. Um, trying to find the thing for it. I'm sorry. How dare. No shot. It's a tally. Like a tally mark? Yeah. There are three lines. So uh, Would he know what that is? Um, Romy Intelligence Occult Difficulty 8. Because this form of black magic is unfamiliar to you. Like all of this is ridiculously foreign. <laughs> mm, he didn't make it. He, yeah. Ooh, <laughs> yeah, your 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 knowledge of blood magic, even though that outside of necromancy is fairly vast, but you can't really pinpoint this one. Maybe it's a unique creation. You're not sure. Hmm. Usually, when you can't figure this stuff out, it's because it's either very recent, or um, or, or because of because it's a, a unique creation specific to an individual, you're not entirely sure. You notice she's got brands on her uh, on her wrists and the base of her neck as well, in the form of chains. But this one seems unrelated. Mm. How did you? Mean, you're crippled these? again. How did you get these? Admittedly, Mina is probably in the midst of like having a, what is probably the vampiric equivalent of like a, an outright panic attack because there's a stick sticking out of her chest at the moment. <laughs> just like, I want to know what this is. I don't care if it's your panic attack. <laughs> yeah, um, you're, you're not going to get an answer from her in this state yeah. pretty much. She is freaking the fuck out. 
the fangs okay. are out. She's hissing. She's crying. I'm gonna, have, I'm gonna have the guy make his roll again to contain you because even though he can't roll, he can still watch. He just fails, but you literally can't make the roll, so he's fine. Mm -hmm. Um, his grip loosens on you, but you can't get away. You're just horribly damaged with the stick, stake, stake, stake sticking in your chest. Um, like there's even more pain. Like it broke through some ribs. You can't really move. Like you can't really move your chest properly. It's interfering with all your other bodily movements. I, I your imagine arms is broken. Your ankle is twisted. Um, one of your legs uh, is was badly damaged. Like it's badly cut open. Um, I, like I imagine the best she can do at this point is just kind of like reach up and touch it and protest. She can't even put any real pressure on it. Yeah. Um, oh, this time she does better. Um, Did so you kill me? Nah, nah, she's not gonna kill you. What she'll probably do is she'll stake you with trying to do as little damage as possible. But uh, we're gonna have a roll to see what she actually gets first. <laughs> Precision is key. It really is. Oh, she does five lethal, or at least she can choose to do five lethal for your sake. If lethal doesn't kill, I think that would literally put her at like six ag one lethal. Um. Yeah, you are at least in capped. I mean, she's out. She done. Like, if I take all that damage, I am literally like one one fucking bashing short of dead. I should choose to um. Uh, to only deal deal for free required to stake you, so won't do all of it. She'll do less. Aw, oh, thanks. Yeah, Mina goes inert. Um. Uh, the Merchant of Bones witnesses the uh, Wisp holding Amina. Um. Vanish from view. Um, it effectively uh, dissolves and apparates. Yeah. Um, he just kind of mutters, "Good job," and um, goes about trying to uh, uh, pat Mina down for what she has on her. To see if maybe she might have it on her person. Um. Take a quick glance. You're gonna find a couple knives at the very least. She has, definitely has <laughs> knives. I don't think she has much else on her though, does she? She doesn't tend to carry much. There's maybe a little bit of coin stowed in very like small little tuck pockets where it won't jingle. Um, tools. you'll probably find at least two knives on her. Probably some lock picks. Yeah, probably some lock picks. Cheap burglary tools. That's about it. Yeah. I can't imagine her carrying much else. Uh, no, the thing is not on her. He just looks to Aster. She doesn't have it. Most likely whoever drew these has taken it by now. She did have it. Looks like they might have escaped to the Shadow Realm. Shadow Realm. Oh, the Underworld. What is it? What's the official call? You, 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 go, you go got out of there real fast. He's like, I thought this ain't dealing with no Cappadocians today. Wait, what? <laughs> I'm confused as fuck right now. <laughs> no the you... person escaped into the Shadow Realm. Oh. <laughs> so I'm like, Yami Yugi's getting the fuck out of there. <laughs> ain't no Egyptian spirit being necromancy today. <laughs> <laughs> um... uh, no, it's... So there are a lot of terms. Um used for the realm of the dead one of them is the realm of the dead um one is hell well not hell um that's 
that's the abyss really um uh, for, for a lot of times one is so you got the shadowlands and you've got um the realm of the dead um those are the two more popular ones the shadowlands is kind of one not well known it's you're a cappadocian so you've kind of heard the term quite a lot over the decades mm -hmm. um it's the one academics used it's the official term there are other terms you've also heard stuff like um uh uh, the Tempests, uh, the Sea of Shadows, uh, Stygia, the Styx. Um, a lot of traditionally, like, a lot of cultural terms are attached to the Shadowlands, and most of them are valid. Gotcha. Okay. I, just, uh, didn't, I didn't want to sound stupid. That's all. <laughs> no, no, escaping to the Shadowlands, I mean, that's, 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 that's the most correct term. Like, that's the one most commonly used by academics of the field. Yeah, that's probably what he would say then, because he's probably heard it in that capacity more than anything. I would, I would assume so, anyways. We can extract information from her without having to ask her. We can force honesty. What fate will become of her then, I suppose, will be down to how much Makavians wish to pay for her. I believe Gregory already owes the Caimans of the city a great many boons. She has caused quite a bit of trouble for our clan, though. I don't wholly know if it would be worth trying to squeeze the Malkavians for more favors. If we are to build a lasting relationship and a presence in this city past the death of our prince, we will need allies. This is true. State detainee would do. We'll let her live for now. We we'll will need to take her back and secure her somewhere. Yes. We should. Should we inform Baijan? After all, if we were to secure this alliance by ourselves, for our own actions, it would look, reflect much better on us personally. She said but not reflect much better, right? She would say no, reflect much better on us personally. Oh, yeah. Like as in, it makes us two look good, and makes Baijan look, well... Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. Mm -hmm. uh, just so I'm clear, she doesn't want to tell him? She's giving you the option, wink, wink. Um, he, he, he would go for whatever makes them two look better. Not, not telling Bajan, then. Yeah. Basically cutting Bajan out of discussion to uh, get a leverage of Markavians. Mm -hmm. Well, when getting leverage of Markavians. Big move, but effective. Something for <laughs> my <in that> society. <laughs> Unfortunately, I don't have anywhere to keep her for now. My haven is sort of lacking in that department. Do you have anywhere to keep her? And plenty of places, while many among our clan were dawdling and dilly dallying. I was busy keeping the city from falling to pieces. I have some safe houses. One of the cells in the city watch would do quite nicely, I think. 
maybe agree. keep it tucked away in the prophet's quarter until we find out what to do with her. I agree. See that it happens, would you? Good work, by the way. What would the city do without the two of us keeping it in one piece? Hmm. I've come to ask myself this question many of times as much as I've been here in the short amount of time that I've been here. I'm glad to see that somebody else has been taking the initiative and trying to aid our clan and the city. But this is going to have to change soon. Hmm. We cannot be the only ones. We should talk later. I'll have you uh, over for dinner. Mm. Sounds good. I look forward to it. Likewise. I will... Uh... contact my friend that you saw earlier to uh, collect our new prize. A shame we couldn't find the the real oh, trophy. Yes. This ritual yes. must have been cast of speed. Five, ten minutes? It is quite alarming. This person must be very adept in all forms of blood magic. We should take note because this is what we're dealing with. And though if what was written in the prophet's quarters the night it was burned, you know, the tower was burned then, we have a lightly suspect, but Getting to them, well, that's another story. Still, the mental exhaustion would remain regardless of the potency or knowledge of, of the canite in question. To use it so much must be... would not surprise me if they're on the edge of torpor. I must question how they're able to keep themselves active. All of this, it is... Well, obviously, it is remarkably, remarkably intricate and complex. This could not have been easy to do or organize. I wonder if this has always been a safe house right under our noses. Or if all of this was done with unnatural speed and precision. I have seen powers of the blood enact such things with what would I would believe take an hour or more in just a few minutes. I suppose one advanced in the art of celerity could manifest all of this very quickly. Still, that door couldn't have been easy to construct. No. I have a mind to break it, but it, I, I believe it'd probably be futile, especially when most likely it can still come up on the other side. And to my knowledge, this door would have a reflection in the Shadowlands. As such, disrupting it from the physical realm would not alter its power in, sh in the Shadowlands. No. Its reflection would not be hindered. Not substantially. It could just be reconstructed and made active again if it's hindered at all. You'd have to do something significant to alter the landscape of the Shadowlands here. This place is thinner than most. The Shroud is thin here. Where there is a great amount of death, and the divide between the two realms tends to be quite shallow.
It's kind of curious that she seems to know more about this than you. Yeah. So I'm just kind of begrudgingly listens, but doesn't kind of, you know, rain on her parade or anything. It's just, she just knows. <laughs> you know? Hey, hey as, as someone who wrote a bonus, this is something to be celebrated. You're learning. Yeah. Kind of just defects to her superior knowledge. Hmm. I can hazard a guess of who might have done it, though I don't know why they would reach out to Mina. <laughs> a fledgling is an easy target. A Markavian, however, an unpredictable pawn to use. Perhaps they are oh. banking on her recklessness. Maybe. Who knows? To think she almost succeeded. Our enemy certainly got what they desired this day. Oh, this night. She'll say this night. She won't say this day. She's told for that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, she's too old, but is. She'll just, she'll just say. The end of the day, we do not Wait. have. We have not been able to achieve our goal. At least we'll be able to salvage something from this. Won't be as much, but it, at least it's something. If I may ask, can you tell me what... What precisely the, well, what was being stolen? I know it was... Well, what was the importance of the Lady of Wrath? I know it was a wraith, but the the good Padre never actually involved me in his experimentations. Hmm. Never considered me up to the task. She kind of rolls her eyes. Hmm. I don't exactly know the full truth of it myself. All I know is that he was trying to feed it. That's all about I understand of the matter. Feed, uh, feed it. A wraith is sustained by human emotions. What was he doing to it? Diffusing the souls. Apparently, this one consumed other ghosts. That's not feeding, that's something else entirely. And an extreme, well, a trait I've never seen in a wraith before. I wouldn't have known. I don't know much about the other side. I can only imagine it to be a byproduct of some sort of magical curse laying upon the wraith itself. The only way to consume a soul, from what I understand, is through the act of the Avalary itself. Or through the forgotten art of the Path of Skulls. Perhaps. This is the, the, what I told you is all I know. Like I said, I've he mentioned it once. What did he... Is there anything he stated in particular? Like what his intentions were? What he was looking for in this experiment? It could give us a clue as to our enemy's motivations. Something about empowering empowering the clan uh self uh you mentioned diablery yes uh he kind of snaps his fingers uh a form of diablery a way to basically follow through with the axe 
but without the more blatant repercussions. Uh, a neonate can quickly become much more powerful than an elder within a week, two weeks. Uh, uh, she seems quite shocked at this. Like, unnerved. That is... As disturbing as it is ambitious. Hmm. It is. But as knowledge in the least. He should be careful where he treads. He borders on lunacy. If he certainly outright treason, if any. Among the elders, what's a hero of this? Hmm. They consider Danbury to be the worst crime. I myself am not one for elder propaganda. But it is dangerous, a dangerous line of research. But I can see its merits of nothing else. And now it's in the hands of even worse monsters. More capable monsters. I can't even begin to imagine what they wish to do with her. I should even say to do with it. Well, whoever has it now is capable. They might even be able to complete the research. That is why that thing is important. That is why this is so much more disturbing. In any case, she will uh, kick kick Mina over. Well, kind of with her leg, just kind of with a heel, just kind of pull her over. So she's uh, kind of just laying there, drawn out, a stake in her torso. And uh, you can hear the footsteps of several guards approach, but only one will enter with uh, with rags. Oh, well, actually, yeah. Um, we're going to wrappings to uh, wrap the corpse that is Mina in. And she'll be taken away to an undisclosed location in one of the many guardhouses or dungeons in this city. And um, I think there, that is where we can end the scene. Thank you, players, for playing. Thank you, watchers, for watching. We'll see you all next time.